Hey folks, so we're going to continue our discussion of twigs and shoots and specifically we'll learn some terms for looking at useful characters that can help with identification. So um, the backdrop for this slide is a series of photos that I took um, of a beach at the very early part of spring. So stay tuned for that. So these can be really useful terms, especially you can see these people are crowding around a, a stick bundled up for winter. So this can be especially useful to have these characters in the wintertime. I know some um, forestry programs like Virginia Tech and University of Georgia have dendrology course in the spring as well as the fall. Um, and so that seems especially challenging, but you really learn to identify tw um, trees. You can identify them by the tree twigs and also the bark. We gave some examples of bark in the last lecture. So we'll talk about twig morphology and all the different parts and then some of the things that make them um, readily identifiable. Talking about buds, um, scars, surface, pith, and shoots. Okay, so twig morphology, hopefully you can see this diagram fairly well. Um, so when we are looking at twigs, there are several parts that can be helpful in the identification. So you can look at the leaf buds, right? Looking at the scales that are, may cover the buds, the size of the buds, or the arrangement. We've already talked about leaf arrangement, and so you can see, um, look carefully on the, the twig on the left and tell me what leaf arrangement that is. And then we have leaf scars. So this is the part, this is the point on the twig where a leaf was once attached. And so you can see the leaf scars are right below the bud, right? That's where you would find the leaf scar. You can have stipular scars also right below the bud. Um, and so that's where the tree had stipules that dropped off. We saw some great examples of those with Liria dendron tulipifera. And then we talked about lenticels. Specifically, we talked about lenticels for black cherry, and we'll talk about elderberry as well. So those are small dots or lines on the tree. They can be horizontal or vertical, and or just dots. And so a tree having those could be something that's diagnostic character. And then we can also look at the pith, and I don't know if all the labs did that last week, but um, taking a cross-section shape of a twig, so splitting a twig and looking at it in cross-section to see if it has particular characters. So um, looking at these, we're kind of zooming in a little bit here on a particular twig. So we can look at the terminal bud that is often diagnostic. Um, sometimes it's fuzzy, sometimes it has a particular shape. And then this leaf scar where the leaf was attached, you can see on this example, it's kind of a heart-shaped leaf scar. The vascular bundle scar. So this is where the xylem entered the leaf and the phloem entered the twig, right? So um, those vascular bundle scars can look like dots. They can be continuous. They can have certain shapes. Um, but that's where the petiole was attached to the twig. And then we have lateral buds, right, which are lower down on the twigs that might have axillary leaves or shoots. You can have pubescence. And remember, we already talked about the terms that we use to describe pubescence when we were talking about leaves. So you could have the same, um, use the same pubescence terms to talk about twigs. And we might see pubescence on the bud or also on the twig. Then we have leaf arrangement, right? So you can tell that from you can tell leaf arrangement even if you have no leaves. So you can see that in this case, there's only one leaf scar for each node. So that tells us that it's alternate. And then finally, the pith, which you can see at the very bottom, um, the cross section, in this case, it's divided or what we would call chambered. So different bud types, right? So let's focus on buds a little bit. So the terminal bud is the one that's found at the very tip of the twig and um, it does not have a leaf scar, right? So that's the dividing end of that twig or the shoot. And then we have, we can have pseudo-terminal buds. So that, that's a really interesting and good character that's useful. It's a bud at the tip of the twig, but there's no apex or ter terminal bud that, that is actually aborted. So it has a leaf scar on one side and often, like you can see in the center photo um, or the center diagram, those terminal buds are now those pseudo-terminal buds are sort of cockeyed because there's a leaf split gar on the other side. You can have lateral buds. These are buds that occur in the axle of the leaf, right? So when we are looking to see what the leaf is, you look for the bud. 
And then there are collateral buds, accessory buds on either side of the lateral bud. So sometimes those can be flower buds on oaks. That's very common that you have a whole cluster of buds. Um, and then finally, there's superimposed buds, accessory buds on top of the lateral buds. So that's something we might see in some of our flowering trees or maybe flowers that are at that point. So here's some examples of terminal buds, right? We have one on the left and you can see um, that there's no leaf scar there, it's terminal. And then what it looks like on pine, right? Pines have terminal bud and you can see it's kind of white and covered in scales. And if you look at pseudo terminal buds, I think what's important to see here is that there is a bud, but there's also a little spot where there was a remain, remaining twig or a leaf attached. You can see that really well on the left that looks like a mulberry that has a pseudo terminal bud and see how the, the bud doesn't point straight off the twig. It's kind of angled and you can see that as well um, on the far right. So pseudo terminal buds, you can see there may be, a, it may be where a twig has fallen off or where a leaf has been aborted, but you can see they're sort of, they're not pointed straight out from the end of the twig. So we call those pseudo terminal. Um, and so here's some more examples of bud types that we have, collateral, superimposed, um, infrapetiolar. Um, we'll learn one tree at least that has that term. Um, that's not one I'm going to ask you to remember or that I'll ask you on an exam. But it's just interesting to see if you see a, a leaf that doesn't seem to have a bud, it might be actually inside the petiole. So that's the case for sycamore. Then we have pseudo-terminal buds and you can see the little leaf scar I think that's what you need to look for if you're trying to determine pseudo-terminal or not. And we also have examples of stalked buds and that's something, an example we'll see for certain trees. So those are all ways that you can look at bud types that can tell you or point towards the ID of a species. Bud scales are also important. Some buds have scales or little leafy coverings. Um, those are leaf tissue. They're modified leaves or sometimes they're stipules. And we have, you know, three different types of scales. First of all, we have trees that have no scales, so the bud is considered naked. It might be covered by a minute leaf, or that minute leaf might be the, the leaf that's at the end. And then we have two different types of scales. We have imbricate, which is by far the most common. You can see on the far left and then the third from the left. Both of those are examples of buds that have imbricate scales. So these are scales that overlap and protect the bud. This often is helpful for preventing it from freezing. And then um, you have an example of a valvate bud, right? So these are two scales that don't overlap, but they kind of come together like a clam. And so I think that's, you can see that that second photo from the left a really important thing to see here is if you see that there's a stipular scar that runs underneath the axillary bud, it's actually um, above the leaf scar and below the bud, even on the terminal bud, you can see a little line that runs there. That is um, a stipular scar and so that tells you that that plant is in the magnolia family. But importantly for valvate, right, it's two halves, um, two leaf scales that are coming together and meeting in the middle, but they don't overlap. So the example we've seen so far is Liriodendron tulipifera. So let's take a moment and quiz ourselves. So if you look at the far left, is that imbricate, valvate, or naked? Consider now the center photo and tell me if you think it looks imbricate, valvate, or naked. And now looking at the far right, um, looking at the terminal bud there, is it imbricate, valvate, or naked? Okay, so now also looking at where the leaf was attached on the twig, that can tell you information as well. So you've got um, different types of scars that we can look at on twigs. So we have leaf scars, and you can see that that's right below the axillary bud on this particular photograph. This is actually a photograph of a, of a buckeye, a type of buckeye called horse chestnut. And then inside of the leaf scar, you can see the vascular bundle scars. So that's where the xylem and phloem connected through to the leaf petiole. And then finally, you can see stipular scars. Um, on some, some trees have stipules. So these are 
little leaf-like structures that are attached below the leaf. Scars can take on different shapes. Here's a variety um, that you can look at and you can see um, leaf scar shape can be all kinds of things, right? So it can be half round. Um, this can be diagnostic. This can really help you tell. So this is the sh basic shape of the petiole in cross section as it was attached to the twig. And here's some photographs of different examples. Um, so I'm trying to look to see what we've seen so far. So also on the left, you can see Era is pointing to the vascular bundle scars that are left on that twig. And so in our class so far, um, well, we learned only tulip tree. And so you might say that's a round leaf bud and you can see a, a series of bundle scars that, are, that form kind of a circle. Um, and we've learned some of these others. We've learned some of the genera, genera but not necessarily the species. Um, looking at stipular scars a little bit more carefully, right? So they are located at the base of the petiole or the stem, right? So stipular scars often come on in early spring. They can help with protection from bad weather, but they often fall off pretty early on. And so they leave the scar um, even while the leaves are still on the trees. So you can see an example of stipular scars on the left. On the right, I can tell you that's box elder. It has a very distinctive green V-shaped um, stipular scars. So then let's talk about the epidermis of so the surface features, right? So the surface of twigs. So there are things that can grow out that are considered stem tissue. So thorns are stem tissue. Um, and so it's modified into these pointed protrusions that occur, can occur anywhere on the stem. So this is stem tissue that's modified and, and it can be on twigs or can be on branches. So it's stem tissue and it emerges from the stem. So that's a really important distinction. Um, we've already talked last week about spines, which are modified leaves. So generally they're modified into points and you can tell that it's a spine because what do you know about leaves? Right, so leaves are always attached below the node or attached at the node. And so if you see a leaf that's subtended by um, the node, you can be sure that you have spines. We also have examples of stipular spines. So the example that we had from our first week was Robinia pseudoacacia. And those are paired stipules that are modified into points and they occur at the nodes. So you'll see pairs of those in a Robinia. Um, we also have prickles, right? So these are surface epidermal protrusions that are modified into points. Prickles can occur anywhere on the plant. So it is not modified, um, it's in the epidermis, right? So it can be, they can be on twigs and they can also be on young leaves. And then finally, lenticels, we've seen several examples of these. So these are small little bumps or wart-like patches of corky tissue. They think that they're supposed to provide aeration um, to tissues underneath, and they can be stretched horizontal or vertical as the tree grows. So let's look at some examples of that. So we have on the far left, honey locust. So do you think that is a thorn, a prickle, or a spine? And then in the center, we have paired stipular spines. Um, might be for Robinia pseudoatacacia. I can see the, um, the swollen leaf bud, which tells me it's Fabaceae. And then I wanted to show you a picture of a cactus because this, those have true spines, right? So you can see the node, the bud, that's there on the cactus pad, what we call the cactus pad. And you can see the spines are emerging from that. So that's actually leaf tissue, which is why they're considered spines. And then finally, on the far right, you, we have what we call prickles, right? So those those are, surf, those are just in the surface of um, the stem. You can actually break them off really easily. Um, and that's an example from Rose. So here's a question. We're gonna learn a species, I think this week, but if not soon, um, called Aurelia spinosa or devil's walking stick. And if you examine the plant closely, you can see why it gets its common name. It's a pretty wicked plant. Um, and so it has these pointed structures that are emerging. You can see in the top left, that's around its, it has a very distinctive leaf scar. It has very huge leaves. And then you can see on the um, bipinnately compound leaves, 
that it has more of these pointy protrusions. So now that you've learned what you've learned, I want to ask you, what are those protrusions called? So does it have spines, thorns, or prickles along the leaf and stems? And then how do you know? So they're prickles, right? And how do you know it? It's that you can find those prickles on the leaves as well as the stems. And so that tells you that they're in the epidermis, so they can go all over the plant. So Aurelia spinosa, spinosa is a misnomer. It should be Aurelia pricklefolia. If they were modified, if there were spines, they would only be no located at nodes below a bud, right? Because that's the definition of a leaf. If they were thorns, they would only be located on the stem. But since we have both, we can deduce that they're located in the epidermis, and so they're called prickles. Um, here's some photos of lenticels. You can see um, really round ones on the far left, and then ones that are stretched a little bit on the right, and then ones that were very stretched on the black cherry tree in the center. So pith can also be a helpful identification tool. This is the central part of the inside of the twig. Sometimes it's a different color, sometimes it has a different texture. So you can have a solid or homogeneous pith. That's where it's uniform throughout. This is by far the most common. And honestly, it doesn't tell you a whole lot um, because that's the most common pith that's around. And then there's diaphragmed, which is a solid pith, but you can see partitions. And so an example of that is Liria dendron tulipifera, which I think is our example for the day. But since you already learned it, I figured it was a good one to use. So if you look on the far left, that's an example of a diaphragm chip pith. And then you can have chambered pith. And I think some of you may have seen this in lab with Nissa sylvatica. Um, if not, the original tree that we taught has now got a twig that is split. So you can see that it has hollow chambers inside the twig. And so we call that chambered pith. Um, we also see differences in pith in terms of spongy ones and, and completely hollow ones. Um, and so you can describe them as sort of homogeneous, diaphragmed, which is um, solid with partitions, or chambered, which is partitioned but hollow in the middle. You can also look at cross sections of twigs. This is something that um, we won't use a whole lot in our class, but it can be pretty diagnostic. And here's some examples of the different types of pith. So what is the pith that's on the far left? What is the pith that's in the center? What is the pith that's on the far right? So we talk about shoot growth, right? So this is long shoots. Um, these are stems with normally elongated inner nodes. So um, over time, usually a shoot is the amount of growth that a tree will do in a given year. And so you can see that um, inner, the inner node is the space between nodes, right? So these are elongated as the tree grows. And then we also have examples called short shoots. So these are short lateral branches and they don't have the inner node elongation. So they just are there. They're either determinate or indeterminate. Okay, what that means is if it's indeterminate, it means the terminal bud just continues to grow throughout the season. So it'll grow as much as it can before the weather shuts down. If you have determinate growth, that means the length of the shoot is predetermined and there's no functioning terminal bud. So you can look at examples of those. And then finally, one last term I don't have a photo for, but a fascicle is a short shoot in pines. And it holds needles in bundles. And the number of needles per bundles or leaves in bundles can be diagnostic. This is a photo, as I mentioned, of a beech tree that I photographed over the course of a month um, from its start. It, and it has imbricate scales. I don't know if you can see that. I don't have the dates on here, but I think it was uh, late March to mid-April. And it's really astounding. Um, I picked photos, so it's not every day, but it's over the course of a few weeks. And it's really astounding to see how those buds start elongating. And then you can see the entire long shoot is inside. And so by the time you get to the last day, you've got eight or nine leaves that have popped out of those two um, tiny buds. Pretty amazing to see. So here are some examples of short shoots. So we see those on some pines. So there's actually a deodor cedar, which we'll learn. Ginkgo, which we'll also learn. Um, white pine has the needles bundled in fascicles. It's just an example of a type of short shoot. 
and then you can see them on a pine tree. Um, lastly, there's a few other STEM features that we haven't talked about that I want to make sure I mention. You can have trees that have epicormic branching, and so the far left illustrates that. That's a pitch pine tree, and you can see that the tree is sprouting along the stem, right? So needles or pine needles are coming out of the stem. It's very unusual. Um, and this is a feature of a tree that is normally adapted to fire. So the short shoots enable if the tr tree goes up in a crown fire, those little um, epicormic branching branches will re-sprout and can help the tree get on its feet again. And then lastly, we have two species in our floor that have what we call corky wings. And so one is in the center, and I think we're learning this one this week, sweet gum, liquid ambar, steressa flua. And you can see not always, but sometimes it has these corky wings that grow on some of the twigs or branches. And then finally on the far right, we have an example of unsurprisingly called winged elm, almost a lot of, um, with the corky wings that protrude from each side. And what's interesting is, is we're not really sure what these corky wings are supposed to be for. Um, or how they're used or what what their benefit is. So it's a mystery one of y'all might work on one day. So let's just do a quick wrap up, right? So normally we use leaves when we're doing tree identification, but we can certainly also use stems, bark, twigs, scars um, to help with identification year round. Secondly, we have different kinds of buds that could be turbital or axillary. They could also be pseudo-terminal or collateral. And the buds sometimes have little coverings, which are made out of leaf tissue. They can be imbricate or having overlapping scales, or they can be valvate, where the two halves close like a clam. Some trees don't have scales on their buds, and so we call those naked. Um, leaf and vascular bundle scars can be very distinctive, and they can help with identification. Um, shoots long and short grow out of buds. And then finally, mistreat, mature tree bark can be distinctive. And so less it can be useful in identification. So, um, whoops, and that's a wrap. <laughs>